Cheers, everybody. We are back for another edition of Bourbon on a Budget. TJ Pittenger alongside Ben Cock and Brendan Sinone. Excited to be back with you guys for another week. We've got an exciting episode, and we're going to jump right into it. Guys, I want to tell you guys a story. I didn't tell you guys this yet before, before we got rolling. We yes. were up in Charlotte this weekend, and Kara has been – Kara went with me. We've uh-huh. been um, on this tangent or on this – we've been having a debate, discussion, whatever you want to talk about um, on whether or not we want to buy a new car, right? My car is paid off. Hers is not, but the payments are like super low. It's mm-hmm. close to paid off. Like it's nice like having just one really low car payment and, and about to have zero car payments, right? So. Right. I am very against it. And she's like, well, what if we have another kid and we're going to need more space? And I'm like, we'll deal with that problem when we get there. Right. Like, I don't, yeah, I'm not worried about what if we have it. Like, we have, if, if we have another kid, we'll have nine months to plan for that child. Like, we, you know, it's not like a, oh, boops, like, oh, you just had a kid. Right. You know, so, um, yeah, kind we've of, been talking about, talking about, <laughs> talking about getting a new car or not. We were up in Charlotte and we pulled up next to a suburban. Right. And I said, hey, would you, we've been talking about what kind of car to get this, that, and the other I said, Hey, would you want a, would, you know, what about a suburban? Would you want a suburban? And she goes, no, nah, not really. And I said, what if we had two more kids? Would you want a suburban? And she said, if, if that was the case, I'd want all the bourbon. She thought I was asking if, if she wanted some, some bourbon. And I was like, do you see that car right there? Like, do you see what that is? And then like ding moment light bulb came on and she goes, Oh, I thought you were asking if I wanted some bourbon, if we had another kid. And I was like, no, I wanted to know. So anyway, that had nothing to do with anything. I just really thought that'd be a good icebreaker to, to kind of warm you guys up tonight and what get into the a nightmare. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, did you, did you get enjoy that? You care so about here's you? the issue. That story is close enough to being, it's not bad enough to like make fun of it. It was close enough to being kind of like, Funny to smile, but not enough to actually make me smile and laugh at it. So, <laughs> from the other room, Kara just texted and said, "Terrible delivery." So I feel yes. like Michael, my- <laughs> <Terrible> <laughs> delivery. you're well, butchering it. I feel That's like- funny. Kara saved the show. Thank you, Kara. You want yeah. some bourbon? <laughs> yeah. If they want to know if you want some bourbon or not, or uh, or not, but anyway, she probably wouldn't understand what you were saying. Ben, could you see TJ leaking confidence during that, like midway yeah. through? When you're you butchering it. it. You're butchering it. Can I have red back, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The delivery's all wrong. You're butchering <laughs> it. <laughs> you're butchering you're, it. Like, you I don't direct- want to reproduce with yeah. him anymore. That's Mr. off the table now. No more kids. <laughs> Mr. Scott, were you directly under her the whole time? That's, That's what, what she, she said. said. That's what you're butchering. Said. Yeah, you're butchering it. <laughs> <The> delivery's <laughs> all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now that we've done four minutes of that, um, thank you for hanging out on a Budget. We've got an exciting show. We have some massive spoilers later in the episode. We're going to talk about the new show, Heist. I don't even know if it's new or not, but the passing the Heist that just came out. It's on Netflix. If mm-hmm. you haven't watched that, listen to the first half of the show. Then tune out. Go watch it on Netflix. I watched it all today. It didn't take that long. Um, good, good episode. Couple of episodes. Interesting. We're going to talk about it tonight. But when we get to that point, we'll tell you. Tune out until you've seen it. Or unless you're not going to watch it. Then just keep listening. But go watch it. Then come back and listen to us talk about it. Before we get into that, we're going to do our King of the Hill Rye. We're going to go to week two. Rare Breed Rye has a challenger that has entered the ring to see if it can knock it off its perch. And then we're going to get into pursuits and purchases. Then we're going to get into talking about Pappy Gate and not Suburbans. So we have King of the Hill, Rye, round two, rare breed, <laughs> wild <laughs> turkey, rare breed rye, going up against old scout, single barrel, barrel strength. Yeah, single barrel, barrel strength, cast strength is what they call it. Um, little competition, gentlemen. Round two, be- rare breed rye. Am I the only one that really enjoyed the fact that you said knock it off its perch and it's like pursuits and perches. wild turkey? Oh, yeah. wild see, I was, turkey. I mean, come on. He said perch. He said perch. This is right anyway. Out. Suburban. Um, it, was a, it, was a, it was better than the suburban. I'll tell you that much. Uh, it would have been hard. It's just pure the amount of time that it took for that to be no payoff. Uh, so yeah, King of the Hill round two. Uh, sorry, you take care of. No, Karis. Uh, <laughs> Karis saved it. She by making fun of you. She made that funny. Uh, so good for Kara. She deserves some bourbon. Uh, remember, Just a bourbon. Thank God. 
Remember? Okay, so I'm so flustered after this whole intro. It's really got me off my game. Can we start over again? No, just kidding. All right, so, so, <laughs> Cheers, everybody. We are back. <laughs> this is round two of King of the Hill. If you guys will remember the rules of King of the Hill, basically we select a whiskey. Uh, this was Ben's pick because he loves this uh, rare breed. And you run through a gauntlet of others in the similar category. And you advance each week if you get two out of three votes. If you win four in a row, we will do a review of it. With, of it. Uh, if you do five in a row, obviously would have done the review, and it goes in our Hall of Fame. What that means, I don't know yet. But we'll, we'll see what it means. <laughs> we never maybe had somebody get there. Maybe we send out. Yeah, we have an you know, old Forester 1920. I think one three lost in round four. Didn't even get the review. Uh, lost to Rare Breed Bourbon. Um, so, anyways, we're on round two here. Last week, the Rare Breed beat Wild Turkey 101. Beat up on Little Brother. Pretty good as the clean sweep. Uh, this week, fellas, we will be doing Old Scout Rye Single Barrel cast strength as tj said uh just for a little bit of background on the old scout old scout is a blender in west virginia maxwell maxwellton west virginia uh lovely this time of year they do a lot of uh, a lot of sourcing a lot of blending uh, pretty well respected they do a really good job with it this is 110.8 proof four years old a mash bill of 95% rye. Can you guess where that's from, fellas? 95% rye mash bill? Guess where it's distilled in? Up north. No, it's uh, uh, MGP. Yes, it is. Uh, this is distilled in Indiana. With, with, between that and the 95% rye mash bill would be a dead giveaway. This is indeed MGP MGP juice. juice. MGP it's, juice. Yeah, it's all rye. Um, all right, let's get into it. Let's see. I mean, I can already tell which one is which, and, well, the, and if people remember the rare breed is what fifty one percent rye, or is it sixty five percent? Let me pull it up. Fifty one percent rye, so very different uh, levels of rye in these two, even with similar proof. What's our cost on the uh, old scout? Oh, I apologize. It's about sixty dollars. It's reasonable. It's yeah, it's reasonable. Easy to find. Easy ish to find. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple shops in Tallahassee that have it. You, I googled it online. You can find it uh, on the interweb on the Google. Uh, you can find it online pretty easily at that same on price point. Yeah, apparently, guys, this used to be. It has four years, right? This is a four year straight rye. Apparently, they used to have some that would be up to like six years or so at the same price point. I think that's kind of been whittled down to four years, so it's tough to find like that extraordinary value but if you like rye uh this is a pretty good hmm. uh high rye i am really enjoying both of these mm -hmm. like really being impressed by the old scout I'm not sure which one it is yet but i know which one it is i, will I say really do like i really like them. the nose good. on the old scout which i is i'm pretty sure i know i just can i just remember so the nose on the old, old scout is like straight spearmint. I love it. Uh, it's fantastic. I love that. I mean, I'm a big spearmint fan. My dad used to like in his pockets, at, in his suit pockets at church, used to have like 15 of those little spearmint candies. And I'd be like, oh, can I get another one of those? Another one of those, yeah. you know? And after like six spearmint candies, church was over. It was great. So um, yeah, that is exactly what that nose smells like to me. It's like one of those little spearmint round candies, the green and white. So this oh, is am like, I crazy with that? I think that's obviously that's a rye no, it, coming through. Correct? It's super rye. If you like rye, all the things that rye possesses, the the mintiness, um, the, the spice just in general, very peppery. The the other one, I'll say the other one, but I, I believe it's the the rare breed, has much more of a much more of a clove type of you know, well, cinnamon, muted. you know, baking spice. It's not that sharp. Yeah, muted is a great word. It's not that sharp. Um, sting of the of the spearmint that I'm getting off of the uh, old scout. Mm -hmm. I assume um, much a much deeper, a much denser spice as opposed to just that bright, sharp spearmint. The noses on these are both fantastic, and they contrast so much, but they're both still really, really good. Um, all right, I've talked about these noses enough. I'll shut up and let you guys talk. But I, I, my excitement is that I love both of them. They're both really good, Brendan. Uh, no, I, I'm with you on, on both of those. I think that you gave a good description on the noses, so I don't have to go a, a ton more into it. It is very clear to tell. Which, well, not it's pretty clear to tell which one is which. The difference in the rye mash bills, I think, shows uh, quite a bit. It's, it's interesting to show how, like, usually to me, like rye are kind of similar the way I I absorb them, uh, but this shows just how distinct and different they they can be. Uh, what about you, Ben? What are you thinking on the noses there? I would agree. I don't think the the nose is as pronounced differently 
than like as the taste is. I've been drinking them, of course. Um, but that spearmint is like so strong on the taste, uh, in my opinion, you know, for what we think is the old scout, right? Um, the spearmint is so spearmint heavy. And that's not a, a negative. Like if you enjoy kind of like refreshing, kind of like this would be a great mint julep. Refreshing is a great word for it. That's yeah, what I, it's, it's much great, crisper and fresher. Crisper, yeah. Yeah, it'd be a great mint julep. I don't get too much caramel, vanilla, all of those kind of like ultra sweet notes. Um, so I would assume maybe this is like a younger, a younger uh, whiskey, rye. I'm not 100% positive. Yeah, that's four years. While the Wild Turkey is a blend of four, six, and eight. I don't know the, okay. uh, the ratio. So that would there. kind of make sense a little bit older, mm -hmm. a little more vanilla. But yeah. Mm -hmm. That Wild Turkey on, on the taste is much heavier. Um, it drinks much denser. Yeah, I um, agree. Which, which goes along with you guys saying that the, the Old Scout is a more refreshing. I don't know. I'm trying to think back. Maybe the 1910 and the 1920. I don't know that we've had two whiskeys in any of the King of the Hills that were mm -hmm. this much of a contrast. Different, it, right. Yeah. So maybe 1910, 1920, but even those were still very much same family, same mm -hmm. blend, you know, like mm -hmm. same, same kind of same banana. Yeah. I, I, I guess like the this maker's is. mark cast strength because it was weeded um, was clear to tell the difference, but you could tell they're in the same neighborhood. This, for, mm -hmm. again, they're both rise. That's what's so cool. They're both straight rise, very similar price point, very similar mm -hmm. in proof. Mashville mm -hmm. is the only big difference there. One, one is basically just double the, the amount of rye. Oh, you know, almost right. 51 to 95 is not an exact double, but like that's almost what you're getting to is right. You know, one is a very low mash bill and one is almost a hundred percent rye, you know, and yeah. that's what's coming through. When you I also got... squeeze in like very little, uh, like malted barley, very little corn. Like you only have, you know, one twentieth left, uh, make all those other uh, flavors work. So yeah. the the rye is, so when I got this, it was about maybe a month and a half, two months ago. And I was out with my my neighbor and I were sitting out in the front yard and we're usually with a lot of Buffalo Trace, we'll share bourbon. And I opened this one up. He does not like super uh, high proof stuff and he doesn't like rye. So he didn't get into this one, mm -hmm. but I was, I'm still like, still getting into rye. And I will say it's opened up and it's mellowed out some. The rye spice was even heavier uh, when it first opened up, like it knocked me on my butt. It was so intense, mm. so rye heavy and, and uh, tasted like rye bread almost. It was that pungent, but it has mellowed out a little bit. But imagine this more amped up. It yeah. was. Ben, I know you love the rare breed rye and you're the rye guy on the show. I mm -hmm. mean, honestly, Brent and I are, are definitely coming around to it and, and becoming rye guys as well. But um, thoughts on the old scout by itself. Like I know you love the rare breed. I know that's something that you go to and drink a lot, yeah. but, but I love this. It reminds me of the, of the high west double rye just amped up because it's not proofed down so much um because that's a really high rye mm -hmm. um, it's, well it's a mixture of two but one of those yeah, rye is 95 rye. one of those rye is 95 percent rye and so that's a very i get a lot of that spearmint on it um mm -hmm. it's it's almost weird like all of the spearmint and it almost gives me like a i almost do get like a sweetness off of it right like it, it's kind of a weird there's so much rye that i almost like find a sweetness with that mint so what are your thoughts on this do you like this not like this just overall in general on the old scout no i'm i'm really impressed with the old scout um one because i i really dislike the label of the old scout a lot oh, like it is it's like peerless it's like peerless like how bad yeah. is that label, right? Pear Pearless is even better because at least the bottle shape is a little different. This is just basically a wine bottle. Yeah, I would I would walk past that all the time. And so, mm -hmm. like now that I have it and have been able to try it, it is hanging really well with um, another like staple of mine with this rare breed. Um, but I, I do think you're right that there's a big dichotomy between what the rare breed is and what the old scout is, just because the uh, mash bill is so different. A lot of, like I said, a lot of refreshing character from the old scalp, which is nice. Like it, you drink it and you're like, okay, like I'm just, it's every, every time it's like refreshing the palate, refreshing the palate, refreshing the palate. It's mostly dangerous, I guess you could call it that, but it's good. I, I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, Britton, what did you tell, what did you say the MSRP on that was? 55, 60 bucks? 
Yeah, I think I paid like fifty nine dollars for no. pre tax. Yeah, just I think sixty over. bucks is pretty good for that. So, similar yeah, prices because the the rare breed is what like sixty five. We got this at fifty nine ninety nine. So right, yeah, at 60. sixty bucks. So same same thing. All right. So, um, man, great, uh, great bourbons, both or great great whiskeys, both of them. I, we did our replacement segment again. I'd like to try this. I, I don't have any double rye on me. I don't think that's not finished. Um, I'd like to try this up against the double rye because it really reminds me of that. And I think, um, I think that for maybe about half the price, that'd be kind of an interesting side by side, maybe a good replacement to go along with our segment that we did a few weeks ago. Um, that it they, reminds they are, me are from the, they are from the same place, right? Yeah, they are rye mostly, mostly rye, all right, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that Some might urban. be a good good Some replacement. <laughs> Um, that might be a good replacement. Now, again, you're dropping quite a bit in proof. That's the big difference there. But for a, from a flavor profile, they really remind me of, of each other a lot. So, uh, Brendan, I need another sample of this so that I can put it up against the, some uh, high West double ride. All right. Um, all right. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. So, man, I think this is one of the hardest picks that we've ever had to do because they're just so, so different. Um, this is, this is a very tough second round matchup. Uh, it I, is. I, I feel bad. This is really great, solid. Great. Yeah. Well, it's only going to get tougher. I'll say that. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, this this was excellent. I think this would get over. I mean, if we reviewed this, which maybe we will, if we reviewed this, I think it would get over a seven. Right? I'm just telling oh, you, like probably. on the composite, I think this definitely gets over a seven. It probably makes the big board. Like it probably gets over seven. We, and a half we do need to discuss this real quick, fellas. The big board here. I'm I'm turning over. There are. It's a top five of what we've done. It's a lot of rye in there. It's a bourbon big board, and there are three ryes right now to two bourbons. And I feel like that's TJ and Ben's doing primarily. We we are going to very soon start doing some. Well, let's talk about that as soon as this segment's over. But uh, let's. Uh, yeah, we're going to change that up just a little bit. So as soon as this segment's over, maybe the end of the show, we're going to talk about some things changing with uh, with our reviews. But anyway, uh, who wants to go first on this? Because I have no idea which one, I, which way I'm going. Like they're both oh, fantastic. Mm. Like, I'm ready. Uh, let, let Ben let Ben go last because he may have to be the oh, tiebreaker here, and this is his uh, his baby. So dang. Uh, I will go first. I will say this. I never had Old Scout until maybe four or five months ago. The first time I ever got Old Scout was at ABC. Their bourbon was on clearance. You can look at the back of their bourbon, and sometimes it is like uh, blended from four different states. It never says exactly which one. Sometimes it'll say just from one state. You can find a one-state one. That's a pretty sweet deal, typically. I, you're not paying for label or marketing, obviously, on it, as we've already uh, said. But it was a bourbon at 100 proof. It was MGP juices from Indiana. It was about like $25, $30. 100 proof MGP juice for 30 bucks. It was excellent. This... Uh, this Old Scout rye barrel strength one, cast strength one. If you like rye, if you love the spice of rye and, and some of the those complexities to it, this is for you. It's going to be a hell of a deal. It's something you should look out for and pursue. Again, if look at the back of it. If it's saying it's in Indiana, that's all MGP juice at a really good price. That being said, I liked the nose on the Old Scout a little bit more. Uh to me, where the difference became pretty evident was the flavor, the taste profile, the finish for the rare breed. I thought it had a little more depth and heft to it, uh, a little more multidimensional, and just more pleasant for me and my preferences. And this were a seven-game series. This would be like a 4-2, maybe a 4-3. Like, this would be a, a pretty good slobber knocker. But I'm going with rare breed for me. I think it's just it has more depth to it again and just – a little bit more quality for my preferences. TJ, what about you? And they're both so good. Like I, you know, I did not love the 1920 that we did last time. And so yeah, I, we, I picked, we know you screwed us over. Yeah. I picked against it a lot. And so, um, yeah, I, I don't know. This is not a situation where I just, I, I like rare breed rye. Like it's fantastic I, for the, for being the same proof roughly. Um, I think it drinks so much easier, um, so so much easier than that 1920 does. I like rear breed rye again a lot, but let me take one more sip because I I don't know. This has been the toughest one that we've done because they're so different. Like you're not just picking like last week was easy, you know. 
the rare brewed rye was a souped up version of the 101. You know, yes, it's just better, right? So one sec. The other thing I'll say real quick is the color and the difference, or the color difference in the two of them is pretty noticeable too. It definitely. Yeah, having poured it, I think that was where I first noticed the difference. It goes back to age. Yeah, yeah, the extra what two to four years makes a difference. Yeah. I um, man. Yeah, this one went to overtime for me. Like I, I had to take one more sip in the middle of giving my answer and buzzer beater. I think and with a sports reference. Yeah. Hail Mary. It was a walk, off, walk off Hail Mary. Buzzer beater. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, <laughs> penalty kicks. Uh I I think I'm going all scout here. Um I, I, you're dead to me. The rare breed rye is amazing. Uh, and Elliot probably hates me for picking the old scout too. Cause it's not wild Turkey, but I, I don't know. Just, I love the rye spice. I love the spearmint again. Maybe it's just, maybe it's bringing back my childhood um, from having those little candies, but it's a, uh, it was really good. I'll go old scout here. Uh, very close. The, and the hardest to pick between that I think we've ever had because they were so different. It wasn't just, Oh, this was a little better than that one. So, one to one going to the bottom of the ninth. Ben, walk us off. Base is loaded. Grand it slam. It Fourth and really, one. It doesn't really matter because like one run gets it. So it doesn't matter if the bases are loaded or not. Anyway. But that is a high pressure situation. You can get all over so it. I will say something that you just did. I will also <laughs> say another thing that you won't hear me say often, but I think <laughs> Brendan is completely right. I think the old scout is a better nose easily more depth character, more fruitiness, more mintiness. And the, uh, the rare breed kind of falls flat for me. It's not anything bright. It's, it's all a little oaky, which is not like my ultimate favorite nose. Right. But on the palette and the finish, the rare breed takes it so rare breed it is for me all it right stunning expected win rare breed i think i no think, one knows yeah i will say i i went into this thinking mostly because of that label that mm -hmm. this was going to be a sweep um that label is garbage that label is terrible that's why you um, save money though you're not paying for marketing or branding or anything like that that's how you get yeah. that great value yeah, and it would be a good value. I, I think that if we were, I, I do think that if we were to rate both of these, I think they'd both be in the seven to eight range. I think they'd both land there. One may, you know, it sounds like rare breed rye. I, I'd rate both of them really high. Like, I don't think I'd rate one way higher than the other. I think both great. I think you'd, I think you'd be looking at like seven, three, seven, four, seven, five, seven, six for both of them, right? Only like, one I, way to find out, we'll have to do one. We got to drink more whiskey. So anyway, it moves on to the next week. Should we tell the people what we're reviewing next or what we're putting it up against next week? I have yeah, it. Yeah, might as well. Might as well. Let's do it. Shout out Joe. Midas Whale. Uh, why is that shouting out Joe? I bought a Suburban this week. Oh, I thought we were reviewing like in the next episode. Never no. mind. Dro Joe, screw you. You're dead to me. Yeah, we take back your shout out. Um, you'll get one in the review that comes up next. But we are reviewing, not reviewing. Gosh, Brendan screwed me up. You we said are, review. It's not we, my fault. We are putting Wild Turkey, Rare Breed Rye up against Wilderness Trail, Single Barrel, a Gas Bars pick. We had Jimmy on the show. We're going to get him back on. Store pick. Um, again soon. We had Jimmy on a gas bar store pick of Wilderness Trail Rye. That's a that's a barrel strength, right? That's that's not 107 proof, yeah. 107 proof. So a little lower in proof, but an ex one of Ben's favorite things that he has. He was stingy yeah. with the samples because he didn't have very much left. So yeah, the ben, are, you, are you worried about like are you worried about rare breed making it to the next level? Because I know you adore the wilderness trail store pick there. You know, it's like watching, you know, like George Bullock. Foreman and Muhammad Ali box, you know. Just like that. No matter the outcome, it's going to be great. So, sports. It's like watching well, the USA like versus France. Stings like a rock. Yeah, it's like watching yeah. the USA and France in basketball. Either way, Float we're like a butterfly, it. make a steak like a George Foreman grill. That's You know terrible. they don't sell those anymore? That's a damn shame. What am I going to They don't sell them? For? Uh, well, Publix had a clearance uh, like three years ago. And I was contemplating whether to get it, and now they don't have it at Publix anymore. They have a pretty good price, though, right? Do you, have, do you have an air fryer? 
I do not, and that's so. I want to get one, but my wife's like, we don't have enough room in the kitchen on the counter to get. Just get rid of the stove. Everything else you have on your counter, take it off and throw it in the trash can. Okay, doing it an now. Air fryer is, do now. An air fryer is all you need. You put coffee beans in there with water, hit air fry, strain it out. It makes coffee. It's amazing. What I I hate how much that that's correct. I I, I, I hate I, I hate it that it's so you can good. make coffee in an air fryer. No, no, I actually, no. None of I actually that don't know that, but, but like it actually makes really interesting. good stuff. It's, yeah, it's kind of an interesting I, experiment. No, don't yeah. do that. That seems like an awful idea. Yeah, coffee explodes. Yeah. I thought first he was gonna like talk like talking about like uh, roasting coffee beans to get no, the, no, 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 that's not. I might try that though. Air fry coffee beans. Okay, air fryer let's, is let's stupid good, and I hate that it's so good. But okay, this so. Add air fryer coffee beans to um, Brendan's pursuits and purchases because that's what's up next. Our favorite segment. That was the best transition this show's ever seen. Um, that was the greatest transition in the show's history. Ben's pursuits and under, purchases. Ben's trying to undercut it on the back end. He really pursuits. Is. Brendan, it's been a long time coming. What? Tell it's us been about, a long time Tell us about coming. what you got. In between your hands. Right so now. after a broken, oh, you don't want to know what I got between my hands. After a broken bottle, <laughs> yes. uh, lost money on that venture. <laughs> mm -hmm. My mother-in-law, Sandy, came up clutch with, if you can see it, oh, you kind of kind of see it in the picture there. It's kind of mm -hmm. right. Lagavulin 11, the Nick Offerman edition aged in Guinness casks. Woo! Sandy, you're here. amazing. Sandy, uh, really clutch. I actually saw it when I was up visiting uh, pre-COVID. Maybe I had COVID at that point. We don't know. Who knows? You no know, one knows. It's, kind of so a, no. it's, it's a medical anomaly. Anyway, saw it up there at eighty dollars. At that point, I was still waiting to receive my Lagavulin uh, bottle. I did not know at that point that it was uh, damaged, broken. broken. Yeah, a complete waste. This was only eighty dollars. I say only for eleven-year-old Scotch. So it's not a bad price at all. But TJ knows from helping me in the uh, the pursuit portion of this that eighty dollars for that is a hell of a deal. Again, thank you, Sandy. I'm happy that I married your daughter. Let's go, Sandy. You're the it best. On, it was on the fence before at this moment. No, I'm just kidding. But really good job. Um, Ben, ben help me. go Sandy, ahead, please. Ooh. So if you've been paying attention, hold on one second. Uh oh, Ben's drunk. <laughs> Very much. <Yeah. laughs> Anyway, if you've been paying attention, go ahead, edit that out. If you've been paying attention, absolutely not. You'll know that my brother in law was in Colorado this past week and was able to grab me a bottle because I love Rise. I love Rise. How about a Michter's 10 year Rye? Oh my oh. God. Can't wait. What is this? Oh. At MSRP? Is that what, what it's telling me? At, at, at MSRP? No. One, 140 out the door? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, he's kissed. So, oh. so no, oh, so no tax. No tax. So good. No tax. 140 out the door? Should right. You just, you just, no cap. No tax. Colorado okay. doesn't have any tax, so it's fine. All their tax money goes to marijuana. Exactly. So I have a uh, Mictor's 10 that we're going to be drinking this Christmas. Hashtag uh, Jake. Hashtag Brian. Thank you. Hashtag uh, TJ, who will get a drink of that, who? please. Yeah, that's who? what I'm Tell them. Okay, tell them what else you got. My pursuit that I don't have now, but. but it's not. You. You're not pursuing it anymore because you have purchase. My purchase. Hold I on. I just, I also, while Ben's doing that, I think I just purchased something from TJ like five minutes ago. Too, okay. Right? In addition to I, my 10-year we'll rye. We'll talk about that when it comes in, Ben. Right yeah. In addition to this 10-year rye. Something even uh, better that the same distillery makes. TJ also did a tag along deal uh, with my brother in law and grabbed a Michter's toasted barrel, barrel strength rye. Spoiler alert, TJ's actually not getting this. I'm going to keep it. And <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's amazing. great. Another great bottle. Yeah. This one, absolutely stolen. I think he got that for like $60. How what? ridiculous is that? Yeah. What MSRP baby? He marked, he marked it up. He marked color. it up on. He did mark it up on me, but we won't. Uh, you mean delivery? Uh, shipping. That was the shipping charge. Oh, TJ, you shut your sweet whore mouth. Uh, right? Did you want it broken mouth. on the way here? It didn't break like Brendan's. Just saying, <laughs> it made it in one piece. 
How dare you? Also, I didn't get my mail. That's illegal. Um, shut your sweet whore mouth as well. Yeah, this was just transported over state lines and then sold at a higher price. So no big deal. Um, <laughs> that doesn't sound true. That doesn't sound true. <laughs> That's what so shout out. Uh, shout, we don't want to say names on this show. Do we shout people yeah, out? Charles. Like, break the law. Yeah, shout out Charles. Charles. Hey, hey, hey. hey, also, real, real uh, future callback, that heist show with all the text messages got me real freaked out. Just saying. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, don't steal 15 barrels of Pappy and you'll be fine. I will. Um, <laughs> so uh, a good week in pursuits and purchases. What nice I will job, tell you, we, we need to do the toasted um, episode soon. What I will tell you is that I know that Ben's not a, a, a massive fan of the toasted stuff, but the toasted rye, having both the Michter's rye spice and being barrel strength makes that an incredibly complex um yeah. drink the bourbon and the sour mash being lower proofs i think it, it, they're just so so sweet and they're good like i i like them but the rye being barrel strength and having that rye spice mm. it's it's makes it just so much more balanced and that is the that's the prize of the three to me that toasted Let's barrel rye right is oh like, no don't <laughs> open it God, you pay the extra money to hear the pop like come on well, i guess i'd hear it here on the show so you live, we live pop. It for twenty dollars right now, would you accept that? Twenty dollars for a pop and I even taste it? That'd be ridiculous. No, you can. Have but you could taste dollars. a little bit, just like you could lick all around. The no, I'm not gonna do it. Twenty. Okay. Get out of here. What was that, Brendan? I said <laughs> you could lick around the rim of the bottle. That's oh, not, crazy. Let's That's move not, on. Okay. Heist. okay. So that was pursuits and purchases. Hey, spoiler alerts coming up. We're gonna talk about this heist show, Pappy Gate. Almost a Pappy Land, the book. Uh, Pappy Pappy Gate. Land. Um. If you have not watched Heist and you want to watch that first, please log out. Do not continue on. If you're not going to watch it, we'll give a real quick recap. We'll give our thoughts, and then we'll get the heck out of here. Brendan, because you have bourbon in your mouth right now, please give us a recap of Heist's oh. Pappy Land, Pappy okay. Gate. Well, Gosh, I'm messing it up. Gate. Yeah. Uh, first off, it was a rye in my mouth, not a bourbon. Oh, get it. Get it right. Get it right. Get it right. I missed it. <laughs> Damn it. Um, all right. So Netflix has a mini series, a docu series out called Heist. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had multiple people tell us, ask us. Uh, ben mentioned it. And then Joe, shout out Joe, future callback to Joe, uh, texted Joe. as well and also asked us if we had seen it. And I had someone on my message board at my other place of a business reach out to me actually today and ask me if I'd watched it. And I said, what a coincidence, Noel fan 6522 31. <laughs> uh, I love you, Noel fan 652231. Gosh. Did they have a did they have an old logo as the as the uh as the I, that wasn't ah. like, I think it was like Minnesota Noel or something like that, but I ah. can't remember it off the top of my head. But I thought it'd be funny. It was kind of funny, better than TJ's suburban joke. That was awful. Anyways, uh I went to go watch it today. I have to admit something, fellas. Uh -huh. You didn't watch it. I, you didn't. You failed the no, show. No, I watched. Didn't even it. See I watched it. it. I got it right before. Thank God, we started about fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes later than we were supposed to, because I was able to just get it in. The reason why it was such a She's photo like, finish was I thought it was just like a documentary movie. So I started watching Heist and thought that's what it was all about. I okay. watched two hours of this weird lady who was like a hip hippie sixties flower child. Yeah, I watched two hours of the wrong Heist. <laughs> No, what? you're lying. This woman ends up moving to like Denmark or something like that. No, she was in Martin a little bit. She got like, like it was like devil, uh, some kind of like devil. What are you talking about? Sex that she was having with this old dude. Was they there any money. bourbon or liquor involved at all? No, I kept waiting for it, and then all of a sudden it's like she got. So you went to the prison. second episode. How many, how many episodes like, were like, there? Like I there can was... see, I can see if you went through one episode, you're like, oh shoot, that was the wrong thing. You went to the second episode. Maybe they get to the you're bourbon. Like, oh yeah, too. this is where this is where they really start doing the bourbon. <laughs> and then, in my like, mind, as it's happening, like as it's happening, I'm thinking to myself like, all right, they did this heist back in like the 1960s. They went to this other country. 1960s, thinking, like, were, Pappy. Interesting. Yeah. I, no, I thought like they ran out of money and they had to do like another. They need one more score, right? That's all these movies, heist movies goes. One more score, right? That's not how it went. You're she got idiot. jail for 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. You're so, an idiot. 
<laughs> and that lady, oh, uh, I can't, uh, weird. I cannot believe the phrase "full blown AIDS" was mentioned at one point during the show. So I learned a lot of things. Um, oh my! God. Not during, not during the Berman part. The greatest thing that she stole was two hours from Brendan on a Monday. Yeah, stolen. Stolen. <laughs> it wasn't Jeez. all the heist. It was the, the fact that she conned Brendan into two hours of watching the wrong. Please tell show. me. Please tell me that like the third episode started and you're like. Oh no, no, no. It, it was it, and, dude, it started to end and it was like this lady got 15 years in prison and I was like, What? She's not gonna steal any bourbon? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I cannot wait to start the 247 thread on this tomorrow. <laughs> like go ahead. Go ahead. You uh, won't. Um, so do you want me to recap Heist or to someone who like well, watched not, only one of these today? How how, how in the world? Yeah, I, we have so many more questions than we have answers. But uh, what are you talking about? Yeah, so Ben, give us the breakdown on Heist. You watched it before all of us. I, right. I watched it today, and, and it was, I will say, it was really good. I watched it on one and a half speed. You guys ever done that? Sped it no, up to watch no, it. I, does that. No, I didn't know that you could do that. that. Uh, I probably needed to do that today. I didn't know you could do I that. Did it. I did it on my laptop. So I was wa- I was playing video games and watching at the same time. I watched what it. What a nightmare. Laptop. Everybody in Kentucky speaks slow anyway. So it's perfect. Like it's, it actually makes it enjoyable. We've been canceled. These, these Kentucky guys were hilarious. Ben, go ahead. Oh, yeah. So one, there's no <laughs> old lady who spends 15 years in prison, just as a spoiler alert for that. Um, she was fairly attractive for being an older woman. I'm just so this that. guy is like the hookup guy for like most of. Kentucky about getting anything Buffalo Trace, Pappy, uh, Rare Breed, Buffalo Trace, Blanton's not Rare Breed, Eagle Rare, Blanton's. Blanton's uh, ben Strong. And, he's, he's a Buffalo yeah. Trace employee, Ben, maybe. But more than anything else, he was a fantastic softball player, apparently. <laughs> like they focused a lot of time on him, you know, banging softballs around. He Jeez, focused a lot of time on softball. That might have been my favorite part of the show was how much he loved softball and how important that was to his identity. No yeah. joke. That was like – Half the show was him hitting softballs and doing steroids and lifting weights. I was like, geez. But, you know, he ended up hooking up and, you know, figuring out that since he worked at Pappy or since he worked at Buffalo Trace, that he could, you know, get these bottles that were just kind of like laying around. Also, I I mean, not laying around. He was taking them off the line. Well, right. I love how the, like, it seems like anyone that works in the distillers is just like an old boy network. And if you could just, (laughs) grab, you know, anything off the line, you're good to go and call it a day. But then it escalated so quickly that, you know, that someone got, some guy called in and the sheriff got their all ears up about it and whatever. Yeah. So he was, <laughs> he was sneaking out. Man, that was really terrible. That was worse than the suburban joke. You know what? Um, uh, Redeem. I, I mean, you should let me know. I was doing the debrief on this. I just threw that out there. I watched uh, it like three weeks ago. <laughs> so, um, the guy was pulling bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? That's amazing. Awesome. All right. So remember when you gave everyone a spoiler alert, TJ? That was not warranted. Ben did not spoil anything. I think everyone is very confused. Yeah, so guy steals Pappy, and that's it. I mean, call it a day. So he was pulling he was pulling a couple bottles here and there, um, delivering Pappy for uh different judges, different you know, doctors, lawyers, different people within the county. And um about you know, what, like, yeah. wasn't it like late 2000s, 2008, 2009, yeah. before the burn Pull, boom? Yeah, pulling a bottle here and there. And, and his and his justification was it was for it was if you knew that you could uh, grab two bottles of Pappy and stuff them in your pants leg and walk out and you knew you'd never get caught and somebody was going to give you $4,000 for it, would you do it, right? Like, yes, the moral dilemma of that. Right, if you knew 100% that you weren't going to get caught, yeah, I, I'm telling you, it'd be tough, tough not to do some of that stuff. So... Um, that was a good one. Ended up, you know, the, the, what is it like 13 barrels or, you know, a ton of Pappy goes missing. And, it was like uh, 200 bottles or something like that. Uh, just an absolute crap ton of, of Pappy goes missing. And, um, they find a, some a hundred thousand dollars worth of Pappy yeah. before the markup. Is what it right. Was. So they, they find some barrels on his property. They find five barrels of, I believe wild Turkey product, which he admitted to. And he said, yep, that's, Yep, I you know stole those. You know, like no, he didn't. His buddy grabbed it because he his buddy oh, worked at right. Wild that's Turkey. Right. That's right. So yeah. he didn't do it. So they ended up charging him with like everything. Like they threw him. I always okay. So hold on, we need to pause here. I always try to interpret what is the documentary like maker trying to tell me 
throughout the documentary. Like how, like what is his perspective in this? And basically the way I interpret it was like these cops overstepped on trying to enforce a bunch of nothing that, you know, the guy just wanted to kind of get famous for being a sheriff. That was literally the way that I interpreted it was like, this guy wanted to get famous for being a sheriff. And, uh, they, he, he pursued this guy for two years, two years mm-hmm. for bourbon trying to get this guy. Are you kidding me? Come on. So the, the Pappy, what was it the Pappy heist? Pappy gate was a big national story. All right. So it was mm-hmm. something that got a lot of play as bourbon was starting to kind of spike. Yep. Uh, and what's another interesting dynamic in this the specific episodes of Heist, uh, not like the first one where uh, some old lady was stealing a bunch of money from an armored truck. Uh, that was the first one, yeah. There was a dynamic of sheriff department versus police department with this. And the guy who was stealing or stealing some of these pappy bottles but not really the guy who's the pappy gate which is a confusing dynamic and really an interesting one of this uh he was selling some of these bottles or had some of this with in the steroid like ring also through softball it's really complex and uh awkward and, and intermeshed and, and very kentucky you know them uh, i hope we don't get canceled uh but anyways he was selling stuff to police officers in this area of kentucky Whereas the sheriff's department was the one kind of, you know, cracking the whip on this investigation. Uh, They knew it was a national story. So that was interesting. Uh, They were doing investigations into the police department and this this, is. Yeah. One of the police officers was on the softball team with them. Right. Right. And one of the guys, the guy who took the wild turkey barrels was on the softball team with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. So the guy who who ends up kind of catching the rap for this initially is takes the blame for the the Pappy gate when it wasn't really him that was stealing all the Pappy Van Winkle bottles. He stole some, but not for what was being called Pappy gate, which was right. hundreds it, of bottles. It's, it sounds weird to justify it, but it sounds like he was just kind of stealing the normal amount that everyone was kind of just like offloading, right? Like he, he'd mm-hmm. grab some here. Everybody kind of like knew that you could just grab a couple bottles. No big deal. Do you think Buffalo trace now has cameras in the, in the uh, warehouse and that there is no more of this going on or very limited. Mm. Well, it ah. is interesting. And I, I've read this with people who've complained about secondary prices and kind of blame Buffalo trace for, for obviously they're the, their product is the most marked up per average of probably any distillery out there. Right. Mm. With Pappy and, and Blanton's and you know, all, all these are, are super jacked up in price. Um, this Pappy Gate kind of helped as a free, not a free PR because they lost money off of it, but like the amount of the amount of press they got off of their product, the amount of buzz of like this is something special, yeah, went up sure. exponentially. Probably something that you can't even really quantify uh, based off of this. It made Pappy legendary, and now we all kind of feel that when we try to purchase Pappy. If you see it in the store, which is very rare, I've only seen it once yeah. in person. It's about a thousand dollars for a bottle. Yeah, and so, um, well, the other side of things is they probably had the guy that did this, and I don't remember his name, but they did have him. They it did. Was, Spoiler was, alert: the end. Yeah. They had the guy. So yeah. if you're watching it at it, you know one and a half speed. You didn't even see it. This. Was well, but no, that's what I was going to say. Had they had him, and he went from oh, I took a case or two to I took two to three to I t- uh, maybe eight. You know, telling him he took 17 cases, like that was it, bro. Like you had the guy, but they yeah, offered him immunity what, like, too. You offered him immunity too early, and yeah. he ended up coming clean and saying, "Yeah, bros, I was the one that did it." You know, and so yeah. thankfully, the guy they kind of pinned it on, who was stealing, but again, got more pinned on him than he should have. He did get out with like a first time offender type parole type thing, and 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 got out to where he didn't have the service sentence. Fully. Fifteen year yeah. sentence is what he had. He ended up spending thirty days in jail and had some kind of house arrest. No, yeah. which is which is good, you know. Like you, you know. I, I mean, he did steal. I'm not saying that that was right, but if I was at Brendan's house and could grab two bottles of Pappy and not be seen, I would take that so fast it's not even funny. Like who I've would do that? that. So, I've yeah. actually done sorry, that. Brendan. <laughs> I always took my sorry, Brendan. that I had are now gone. Yeah. And I'm so, file an insurance claim. It was interesting though. I liked it. Did you guys watch that um with Rodney Highland Rodney Hyde, the cocaine island um 
uh, documentary a few months ago. It's just a one. I, I'll send you the actual link, Brendan, because I feel like you'll watch the wrong thing. Um, you'll watch like, I don't know, Gullah Gullah Island or something. But uh, hey, I think that... I'll send you the actual link, but uh, it reminded <laughs> me of that. Like, it kind of took the fall for something that that wasn't as big of a deal as as it should have been. But uh, that guy was likable. I know documentaries are set up to make you like the guy that's the main character, but I liked the guy. I liked the softball. I didn't like Brady, him. He was really, really didn't like him. Softball. His wife was much more attractive than he was. There was a lot. She didn't on. age well. <laughs> okay. She didn't age. She didn't age well. I'll I say that. I thought she looked better older than she did younger. I oh my gosh! Like, well, you're uh, 80 years old. My lord, she looked great back in the day. Yeah, that pearl necklace. It was a thing of beauty. Can you guys um, follow Fred Minnick on YouTube? No, never yeah. heard of her. So he's okay, Fred Minnick is a huge guy in the bourbon community, just in general. I don't but know. I've uh, never heard of bourbon. Okay, <laughs> have you heard of suburban? <laughs> <laughs> all, so right, anyway. all right, all right, all right. So anyway, this uh, Fred Minnick is a guy that's like been in bourbon for like years and years and years, and he was one of the guys that was like one of the like reporters around like Peppingate back in 2013 to 15 at the time. And remember in the documentary, they pulled or the, the main sheriff pulled in, like once they arrested him, they got this huge press conference and they had a bunch of bottles out displayed or whatever. The story goes that he says is that by the end of that press conference, one of the reporters from like some national firm had stolen a bottle of Pappy and was trying to get out of the press conference room with it. And they were like, Hey man, you gotta put that back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What a move! What a what, move! What was uh, I will start with my favorite moment of the two episodes uh, of Pappy Gate, not the first one. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, uh, I really love the journalist uh, for the the local Kentucky newspaper in that with his scarf and just seemed like he was really enjoying himself. It was a hell of a scarf. I thought that was an interesting scarf. wardrobe choice. Yeah, that was my favorite part. I like um, the part where um, remember when they when they started there was those those two guys or it was a guy that had a big beard and he was like supposed to be like a like a moonshiner the moonshine guy was it like moonshine yeah, really country like boy yeah. he was like hey man if we see someone with like a pappy in like their house we like know not to ask where it's from like we just we just like hey we just assume like you got it but we don't we don't ask where it's from kind of thing like everyone knows that you get it off the market. Yeah, that's how you get your pappies in Kentucky kind of thing. Plus, that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we're guys, right? Like, we like heist movies. We, you know, everyone loves the Italian Job and Ocean's Eleven and all those kind of things. You know, I like Ocean's Thirteen the best. I like Ocean's Eight. Uh, un- Spoiler oh, alert. is that is that dang, is that eight? Dang it! I was really going for the eight. <laughs> you <laughs> blew it. it. You blew I it. know. I was like, dang I, it. I've never seen Ocean's Eight. I saw um, thirteen and twelve and eleven. But yeah, I eleven to thirteen. They say eight. Dang it. Wait, eight's, future, a, eight's future, the all eight's the all women one. All girls. I've never seen, uh, that. seen that one. Future callback. We've had a lot of Julia Roberts references in the last. Love this Julia Roberts. Massive yeah, Julia great. Roberts. Um, I would I would marry Julia Roberts, but she'd probably run away. Um, so anyway, Tim, God, that was awful. Is that, is that good? No, no, okay. it was good. Um, Keep going. She would run away. Oh, run geez. away, Brian. On a horse. No, On yeah, a horse. Yeah. Um, love Julia Roberts though in in real life. So, um, I love Chevy Suburbans. Um, I love Chevy Ride. Oh Sub- my Sarai. god. Sarai. Okay. Psoriasis. That's ah. what Ben's gonna have tonight. Um all right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. This is Bourbon on a budget. <laughs> so um favorite part. We all love like heist movies and stuff like that. Like we love that. I mean, obviously, we watched the documentary, right? I mean, I love how we just like, yeah, we just grabbed two 20-year-old pot pappies, like <laughs> just walked out with them, like no big deal. Just stuff in your pants and leave. And I'm like, yeah, it's a good thing that I wasn't working at Buffalo Trace in 2006 because I'd have been doing that same thing if everybody else was grabbing pappies off the line. Like, you know, I like to think that I'm pretty moral and wouldn't do that, but I clearly would have. So anyway, thought that was cool. Um, any other takeaways before that, before we get uh, into like what we're reviewing next? Any other thoughts? The only other takeaway is that TJ is a thief at heart. Thief. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. So, um, <laughs> I, drank we, pappy, I drank some pappy this weekend. Yeah, from a can't, thief. can't hide money. Uh, talk to us about your weekend real quick, and then we'll get out of here. I have a, right. one, one more announcement, then we'll go. 
All right, real quick, I went down to uh, Central Florida for my friend's bachelor party. It's one of my best buddies from middle school. Uh, mm -hmm. There's three of us who are just really great friends from that time in our each other's lives, and we've all kept in touch through the years. And uh, he's getting married next month, and he's in, uh, 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 I was going to say Washington State. It is Washington State. He's in Seattle. Flew back to Orlando to see his folks. Uh, we drove down to see him. Uh, my other buddies in the Lakeland area, so we all got together. I brought down Pappy. I brought down the Red Breast Cast Strength. I brought down Lagavulin 11. Uh, and I wanted to share it with my with my friends who all really love bourbon and whiskey. Uh, so we did that. We enjoyed the the Pappy. Uh, my other buddy had a George C. Stag and a Stag Junior. And then he mm. bought a, another Stag Junior while we were down there for $300. Might as friend. well. You know, might as well. He's like, should I get it? I was like, ah. He's like, you can try it. And I was like, ah. Okay, yeah, sure, we could do that. Uh, we I can't believe you encouraged him to do that. I didn't encourage him to do it. I told him not to at first, but once I realized he was going to do it, I was like, well, I might as well enjoy uh, this whole experience. We did a blind. I ended up liking the Stag Jr. more than the George C. Stag. I was shocked by that. Uh, it went out for me. It was somehow smoother, uh, richer, mm. more complex. Uh, and then we went to a bourbon bar and got to try you, like six different bourbons. Uh, do, you, what? What? do you have any idea the... Sorry to interrupt. Do you have any idea the years on those? Because uh, we tried we tried 2019 and 2020. Stag, George C. Stag. So we had George C. Stag 2020 and we had Stag Jr. Batch 14. And Ben and I, Ben and I both agreed that the Stag T the Stag, the George C. Stag was infinitely better than the Stag uh, 14. I'm more just team. questioning your palate more than anything. Yeah. So maybe, but maybe the there are, still at there, play are here. there are better and worse blends of all those years right or not blends but like you know renditions of all those years mm -hmm. but i'll say for the 14 versus the 2020 stag was not a comparison they were they were the same thing same kind of flavor profiles but the stag the george c stag was so much smoother so much easier to drink had so much less of a bite to it um those were our thoughts around it uh so it was the batch 14 stag jr if i recall correctly 12, 13, 14, and I think my friend ended up getting 15, if I'm not mistaken, what he bought, but I didn't try that one. He ended up not opening it, which was a ripoff. Uh, those are all considered superior to previous uh, previous versions, prior versions. The George T. Stag, I believe, was is either 19 or 20. It was the one that was sub 60% alcohol. It was the sub lower. 60%? Yeah, right? Yeah, it was it was like fifty nine percent. It was one of the it was in the fifties, which typically George C. Stag is over one hundred twenty proof. Um, I have seen different years that are pretty low. Yeah, our George C. Stag is one hundred thirty. Right? Okay, so this was uh, this was I think twenty nineteen, which was their lower proof one, which actually got like the best reviews of any in like recent years. <laughs> uh, it was, I mean, don't get me wrong, really great, but it wasn't. I send it back. Actually. Yeah, so we were trying one thirty up against one twenty nine the age on the George T stag really put it over the top. So we were trying two very similar proofs, but one that was aged much longer. And that's why we certainly liked it better because it had all the roughness, all the rough edges kind of smoothed off of it. So no, this was um, like one thirty versus one. Yeah. So that, that right. does make sense. At first I was like, what in the heck's wrong with you? But I that, that, that makes a ton yeah. of sense. Okay. We have a new format for our reviews. I want to talk about this and then I want to get out of here because this show's almost to an hour, maybe a little over an hour. You um, never know. We have focused on reviewing things that are on a budget. I think we've really run the gamut on that. We've done a lot of pretty standard bourbons. We're not done with that by any means, but we are no longer going to review budget things only we broke the budget a couple of weeks ago when brendan was on his COVID hiatus we tried that out just to kind of see how things would go because it was something that ben and i both had it was mm -hmm. a light whiskey episode go back and, yes. and listen to that fantastic absolutely great um could set an airplane on fire evidently but supposedly Allegedly. we have really really run the gamut on budget stuff we've done high west double rye budget bourbon we've done sazerac rye budget rye we've done uh, Woodford budget four roses, small batch budget. We've done a lot of different stuff. We are going to, in any given month, we're going to have a new format. We're going to do two budget bourbons or rise two budget whiskeys, one store pick. So that store pick can be a budget thing. It can be something that's a little bit outside of our budget, whatever it's a store pick. And then we're going to go one where we break the budget. So where we go a 
sixty dollars and above, I believe, is kind of breaking the budget. We said our budget mm-hmm. was between, you know, thirty to forty-five, maybe fifty on an on an off chance. We're gonna go one breaking the budget, one store pick, two budget bourbon slash rise, whatever we choose to review, just to kind of change it up. I think we've really run the gamut on on budget stuff. I don't know how much more budget stuff we could really get to break the big board. And so we're going to kind of attack it from a different angle. We will certainly factor in price and availability in our store picks and our breaking the budget segments. Obviously, they're probably going to get a hit there because they're more expensive and harder to find Mm -hmm. in the value segment. But will what they do in the first three or four segments, nose, taste, finish, cohesiveness, and complexity, will they do enough there to be able to upset and maybe even break that go over eight uh, standard that we have right now with Smoke Wagon Small Batch being the leader on the bourbon big board. So anyway, we'll see. A little bit of new format. If you guys hate this and it sucks, we'll go back to budget stuff only. I think you're going to like it. We've gotten great reviews on the stuff that we've done that's outside of the budget. Mm -hmm. So new format coming soon. Um, That could be, though, with just – that episode with Brendan not being there because he was had COVID. So oh, that's it could true. have been just a little mix of, you know, yeah. breaking the budget, no Brendan. He, he, I was that there. Kind of thing. Yeah, Boy. he was there, though. So Yeah, but he were less involved. People liked was, it a little more. We started this show before we went on air, basically saying if we ever got to the point where we hated each other and didn't want to do this anymore, um, we would quit. I know you guys think we hate each other, but we do actually like each other. I know we just give each other crap the entire episode, but uh, mm-hmm. yep. I, I actually do like Ben. So there's that. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Brent and I talk on the phone. Uh, we all three. I mean, I don't know how much you guys talk without me, but I mean, I talk. You guys have a little text too, chain. That's so cute. I like it. We, don't say, hey, 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 shut your mouth. <laughs> shut your mouth. <laughs> Pam or Pan? Is it Pam or Pan? It's Pan. Um, Pan. Pan. Any closing thoughts before? Hey, what are we reviewing? And then let's get out of here. Somebody take take, take the wheel here. Please. Oh my god! All right, almost forgot about that. Shout out, Joe. Future callback. Told you guys it was coming. Boom! Joe, you're, is, you're the best. You're the man, Joe. Uh, Widow Jane Decadence. Joe hooked us up. TJ and myself. Ben, sorry. S O L. Although you kind of yeah, you know, live off this a little bit, right? He gave us four samples each to try when we were in Charlotte this past week for work related reasons. Uh, we didn't get a chance to drink them while we were up there simply because there was just a lot going on and not a lot of time to sit down and drink. We make time for it with this future episode. Widow Jane Decadence. It is a maple cask finished bourbon from New York. Uh, maple, New York can go together. Pretty, uh, I can't think of the word, pretty well. Yeah, pretty very well. Think of like you, sub- you, suburban. You you write for a living. Maybe Vermont. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. New Maple York, in New, New York. York. New York also is Maple, pretty big. Uh, in Maple Maple in New York go together like <laughs> California and steroids. Like, you know. <laughs> Maple right. in New York. <laughs> this train is so far off the tracks. There's no getting it back on. Thank you so much for joining us for another Thank edition you. of Bourbon on a Budget. Brendan, go watch another heist episode that has no relevance. Ben, go buy a <laughs> Suburban. Let's get out of here. We'll see you guys Thursday for our review of Widow Jane Decadence. Until next time, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. I guess cheers. It goes together like pepperoni in Wyoming. (laughs) 